bro, I, I'm over here eating like ice cream. Uh-huh. You know, and these guys are accusing me of fucking <laughs> doing pee, yeah. like pee sugar. I'm like, bro, I, I literally have a. Bro, I'm literally eating ice cream. So how the fuck can I be on PEDs? You know? How the fuck can I be on PEDs? I literally just ate an ice cream cone, bro. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, a drumstick. A vanilla fudge drumstick. You guys. I just had a vanilla fudge drumstick. Like, why would I be injecting testosterone into my ass when I just ate a drumstick? Like, does that make any logical sense? Why would you conclude such a thing? Yeah. Waiting for me after my run tonight. Like, yeah. All these these boxers are like. True, Jory's just like yeah, yeah. In his head, he's like, how the f is this relevant at all, Jake? What's up, guys? Derek, MarePlaceForDays.com. Today we are going to be reacting to the Jake Paul interview on True Jordy's podcast reason being is they actually addressed the faras zahabi um bold claims of saying that jake paul is going to be on an array of peds and um tyron woodley is not he is indeed going to be you know natural but jake paul is gonna be on a ton of shit just the full gamut of stuff there's no drug testing or if it is it's very very you know not stringent and he thinks that jake paul is going to be sauce to the fucking tits and Tyron's going to be not. So anyways, they both get a bit annoyed by this. You know, obviously being uh, literally fucking Jake Paul himself. And True Jordy being uh, friends with Jake Paul, I guess, presumably. So um, yeah, let's just fucking get into it. And uh, we'll see what they say as we go here. And the facts are the facts. So credit to you, you've been working hard, bro. And that dedication's paying off. And one of the things I've seen that came out in the last week was... A former coach of Tyron Woodley, Faraz Sahabi, who I previously mentioned to you in the last show we did, who picked against you, I think, last time. Um, he's come out and picked against you again, and he's also said, which this really pissed me off, actually, he thinks you're on performance enhancers. Uh, I don't know if you've seen this comment from him. He didn't at any point say why in terms of why he thinks, like he never said he looks a certain way. He's, he just said, oh, those guys, you know, it's boxing. So uh, here we go. Morning report for Raz the Hobby suggests Jake Paul is taking PDs and says it will absolutely make a difference. Um, yeah, so like the, the exact quote, I actually don't remember off the top of my head, but it was basically, I don't want to misquote, but go watch it yourself. I did a video on it, you know, reacting to him. And he was basically saying, I think that Jake Paul will be on a lot. I think his corner is going to have him on a decent amount of stuff. Whereas I think Tyron's going to be totally natural and it is going to make a difference in the fight results. So, you know, pretty fucking bold and obviously. Now, again, True Jordy is coming at this from the impression, the perspective of if you have, a guy on steroids is blatantly going to exhibit some sort of actual physical representation of steroid use, like a traditional, you know, roid monkey look. You're going to have like more muscle mass and gain a shit ton of size that you otherwise, you know, didn't have a year ago or something like that. You know, he, he clearly has a very rudimentary view of this stuff, which we will get into shortly, which is fine. You know, he's not expected to know a lot more than that but i mean um it's easier to kind of elaborate on the situation given knowing the context he has behind his statements and i just thought to, to have no basis to say that really shocked me but i wanted to know how it feels for you to have that labeled at you when he says no basis to say that it's like like it's speculative based on the incentive to take it it's not necessarily based on the fact that jake paul's accrued like 15 pounds of lean tissue or something fucking insane that's obvious Rather, it's the fact that he has so much to gain from winning this fight. Now, some people would argue the opposite, and they say Tyron has less to lose than Jake Paul, and Jake Paul has more to lose because he otherwise is not going to be able to get a big fight again if he doesn't win this fight. But then there are people on the other side of the spectrum who are going to say things like, if Jake Paul loses, he's losing to a fucking former UFC champion, a very, very athletic and gifted individual who no one would really expect him to kill in the ring anyways. So if he loses, is it really a big deal? Whereas if Tyron loses... Yeah, he's doing it for the money and he doesn't have a lot to gain by winning necessarily, but he has, he could get fucking embarrassed, you know, it reflects on the sport of MMA. He's also a good striker. So the fact that if he loses, it's not going to reflect too well on his, you know, MMA skills, his ability to box, his just, you know, credibility essentially as a, you know, good representation of the sport. Because a lot of MMA guys like really, really don't want to give Jake Paul 
any fucking props at all. Like they're very, very opposed to this guy having any sort of success and they want to discredit any kind of wins he's had in the past and basically, you know, talk about how the guys he's fought are, you know, like bums and whatnot. But if he beats Tyron Woodley, it's a pretty big fucking deal. And, you know, it reflects pretty, uh, you know, as a representation of what is basically the elite of MMA. Now, obviously, he's on the downslope. You know, he's uh, not competing like he once was. He's no longer a champion, blah, blah, blah. He's still a fucking elite MMA fighter. So if Jake Paul smokes him, you know, that like shut it's going to shut a lot of fucking people up. Yeah, I look at it as a compliment, right? Mm. These MMA guys are running out of excuses on why their guys are losing. Mm -hmm. uh, and to, to make a claim like that out of nowhere just shows like it, he should he should be embarrassed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my manager texted me that I woke up in the morning. <laughs> so should he be embarrassed for like people are asking him his opinion? And if he speculates that and he's answering a com like a frequently asked question, like this is a his AMA on YouTube, as far as I know, is basically answering questions for people. And this is part of like what he does. This is, you know, he's a highly respected individual in the MMA community and people want to get his insight on stuff. And people have the same questions that a fuck ton of other people have. And it's highly requested to know something. He's, you know, going to touch on it, give his opinion. I don't think it's so crazy for him to give an opinion on something. And speculate, you know, like ultimately, regardless if you have a million followers or you have one follower, like there's guys on their couch, like with their buddies watching the fucking fight. Like, do you think Jake Paul's on fucking gear? Like, what do you think's going on? Do you think he got away with this? Who do you think's going to win? Why do you think so? You know, do you see a giant leap in his performance from this? Why is that? Like, what do you think's going on? People are talking about this shit all the time. It's just the fact that for us is, you know, an authority in MMA and seen as like a, you know, a legend in the sport that somehow he's held to some higher standard where he's not allowed to speculate on shit. Um, kind of silly in my opinion. And he was like, uh, George St. Pierre's coach is saying that you're using PEDs, mm -hmm. FYI. And I was like, I, so I literally swiped my phone up, went to Safari and I Googled what are P what's PEDs. <laughs> and I, I swear to God, I, like I swear on my mom's life. So like, do you really think a guy who's trying to become an elite high level boxer essentially like i guess he is a professional boxer at this point he's fighting not actual boxers yet but he's in these like big fucking cards making a ton of money he's boxing he's training like he's a you know pro boxer and you know he's starting to get better and better draws better and better fighters are fighting against him um like this is something that you're living and breathing every day for the past couple of years at this point do you really think you're not going to have come across this subject at least one time you know like it's highly speculative about guys like Pacquiao, about guys like Canelo, about guys like Mayweather, guys like this that you fucking know for sure, like their careers, like pretty goddamn elaborately. There's no way you have not touched on at least one time. Talk to your trainers, talk to your gurus, talk to whoever, even research on your own, like what kind of drug testing goes into these sports? You know, what are PEDs? What kind of PEDs are guys using? What have guys bought, got popped for in the past? What could help performance that's legal? What stuff you could get away with using because it's not, you know, banned by WADA. Do you really think you're not going to be looking for every single advantage you have in a legal aspect? And then above and beyond that, like at tangent your way into seeing like, oh, like I wonder what else like people have been doing over the years to get a leg up and an edge on their opponents in the boxing ring when you're trying to fight for millions of dollars and literally solidify your name as a credible high level athlete when people think you're a clown. Otherwise, I'm not saying he is. I'm just saying like he's trying to prove a lot of people wrong. There's so much fucking incentive to do this shit and the fact that he has never heard of it in his life i find highly unlikely uh -huh. and it says performance enhancing drugs i'm like oh my god like mm -hmm. th these guys these guys are trying to do anything at this point to discredit me to make me look stupid or to make any excuse and the and what's the the crazy part about it is like dude these are real pro fights like we get drug tested so mm -hmm. so this thing the thing i find interesting is yeah it does seem like some individuals like I found it interesting how Faraz said like pretty, pretty confidently, like Jake Paul's gonna be using shit, but Tyron's gonna be natural. Like, I don't see how you would determine that given the fact that they, there's a lot on the line for both of them in my opinion, you know? So I don't know why one would be so blatantly, obviously enhanced to the gills. Like he pretty much said like he's gonna be using a lot of different shit, whereas Tyron's gonna be totally clean. That to me was like a really, a bit of a reach in my opinion. And to me, it seemed a bit, you know, perhaps 
like a you know justification for an MMA fighter perhaps losing. You know, basically saying that Tyron has a better like ethics and moral fucking compass than Jake or something, and Jake is you know gonna do whatever it takes to win. And Tyron would never cheat, but Jake Paul would in order to win. And then if he does win, it's not as justified of a, of a victory, and it's kind of bullshit. Like that's sort of like the implication people are getting out of that that are not like in agreement with him. And whether that's the case, whether that's what he meant or not, and that whether that's you know biasing him and what he's saying, like obviously it's understandable that Jake would get fucking annoyed by that, as would anybody. You know, it's kind of it's kind of insane to be like, how do you have any historical data of suggesting me? being more likely to cheat than a guy who's like a fucking sauce to the gills looking fighter who has years under his belt of experience in the game, including when gear was, you know, like heavily used. And yet I'm the guy who's definitely using shit and there's no way he's using anything just because I'm like a more shifty individual. I'm less trustworthy or something. Like, I don't know, man. That seemed like, like I said, a bit of a reach. But then when he mentions we're being drug tested, it's like, okay. <laughs> So we get into that part, like, how are you being drug tested? How stringently, how frequently, how randomized is it? Is it just the night of the event? Is it, you know, on a scheduled interval basis every single week? Is it randomized for fucking months ahead of time? Like, how rigorous is this process? How much resources have been allocated into actually doing this properly? And has it been for, like, a year prior? Is it eight weeks prior? Is it six weeks prior? Is it literally the night of? Not very much elaboration here that gives any kind of useful, you know, reinforcement of his credibility in that regard. But I definitely do see why he'd be annoyed that people are, you know, saying he's essentially less of an ethical person and more likely to cheat than Tyron just because he's, I don't know, not a legend of MMA or some shit. Like, I don't know. Oh, how can you even make this claim? Like, he, he you know, it's clever. Well, his, his point, the guy his when I watched the video, his point was that, oh, it's not as stringent as the UFC testing. But, you know, my point to, to return to that would be, do your fucking research. Like, how old are you, Jake? Uh, 24. Right, you're, you're, you're a very young guy, okay? Since I've known you, your, your physical body, obviously, it's changed a very small amount from all of the, uh, the training that you've done. But it's hardly like you've packed on 20 pounds of muscle. Like, you, you know, you, you're getting fitter, you're getting stronger, but your body, your physique, and I know that, look, there's some stuff that it doesn't show up or whatever. But to me, I just think it's so unfair to label that at a kid who is performing and doing everything he can he doesn't you don't look in any way like you're much like you know um conor mcgregor or any of these guys that you've, you've barely changed physically and to just throw that out there with no evidence to support it i think is so he should be better than that is, is a man who who worked with george st pierre who in the period where the ufc was drugged up the fuck george st pierre was the biggest and strongest welterweight but he was drug free apparently you know so there's a lot of comments in the comment section about how true Jordy says is essentially implying that George St. Pierre is on gear during the UFC and then he left right when UFC really like came in with its strict guidelines and that's suspect as fuck but Jake Paul is definitely not using PEDs despite the fact that there's more lenient drug testing right now. Uh, like, so he, he's kind of getting a bit of hate on that um, and understandably so. But again like you know everyone has their opinion and it's just the thing about this guy is it seems like he's very, very close-minded and kind of in the thought process that a guy blatantly has to look like he's on gear or have some sort of manifestation of physical clear changes in his musculature and body composition to actually be reflective of performance enhancing drug use, which is not the case at all. You could be using shit that enhances your neurology, that enhances motor unit recruitment, that enhances hematology, that enhances fucking recovery like there's so much shit you can be doing that's going to give you a huge competitive advantage over your opponent it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to look like you look like you took shit and your physique transforms you could stay the exact same fucking weight and enhance a lot of different vectors of performance like look at again i often refer to this example because a lot of people do the whole does he look like a juice head you know smell test when they try to refer to you know he's basically doing a natty or not on fucking jake right now and how many guys in the UFC have been popped who don't look like they take fucking anything? Like Anderson Silva, the, the times when he popped positive for things like Masteron, these were times when he didn't have any blatant changes in his physique that were superior to his previous outings, you know? Fights where he tested clean and he smoked guys and fucked them up and did the most crazy shit. 
and looked better than he did at times when he used things like draw standalone. Does that mean that, you know, anything? Like he didn't look better, so therefore he probably didn't use shit? Like no, he tested positive for fucking gear multiple times. Did he look better in those fights? Was there some blatant 20 pound increase in muscle mass? No, and guys who are in weight classes, are they going to be using shit that's going to fluff them up and increase their weight significantly? No, they're gonna be choosing things that's going to enhance endurance. They're gonna be choosing things that enhance force production with a relative lack of increase in body weight. They're not gonna be trying to look juiced up to the gills. So to say something like, does he look like he gained a bunch of muscle? No, he didn't. So why would you be speculating about that? Kind of fucking silly. I understand he's trying to back up his friend and there really is no evidence necessarily that he's doing anything. But ultimately, Faraz is doing a fucking AMA and people are asking him a question. He has a lot of experience in the sport, a lot of experience with fighters. And for him to give a, you know, informed, you know, educated judgment here, I think it's fair. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. He can speculate about whatever he wants. And this is his opinion. Like, why is he not able to say it? You know, people are asking him, is he supposed to just like fucking ignore the question, even though his AMA is like his chat box is fucking flying and people are asking him, donating to him and like send him like 20 bucks. And they're like, tell me if you think this. He's just gonna be like, oh, sorry, like I don't wanna be uh, you know, unethical by telling you what I'm already thinking. And you're probably asking your buddies about, but because I'm an authority in the MMA space, I'm not allowed to fucking give my opinion. Like, of course not. I think it's totally reasonable for him to say what he thinks. And I think this, you know, George St. Pierre comparison with uh, you know, the Jake Paul thing, I don't know, like it's kind of just silly to look at a guy and be like, does he look soft? Therefore, he is or he isn't on gear. Like, that's an easy fucking call, of course, when you see a guy have a crazy physique, it's a lot easier to pick off like, oh, maybe he's, you know, using a lot of shit. It obviously is like a no brainer to speculate of a guy who looks better than 99.9% .9 of other fighters. But to use that as your only basis of a conclusion, drawing a conclusion off just what the physique looks like, you know, is, is silliness. And I would think a guy who's a fan of the sport and is talking about the shit to begin with, you know, would know that by now. Like how many guys have popped that for shit that has nothing to do with your physique, you know? Like TJ Dillashaw recently with the EPO. Doesn't mean he was cranking his fucking face off um, before that fight with gear necessarily. He didn't gain 20 pounds of muscle. That would have been a horrible move for him to try and gain 20 pounds of muscle, you know? You know, yeah. and George St. Pierre campaigned <laughs> forever for, for Yusada. The minute Yusada came into the UFC, he left. Then, the, then he came back for one fight. He said, you know what I mean? So. If you live in a glass house, don't throw stones to me. I, I was really, as a friend of you, I was a bit pissed off at that because I'm like, this kid, they're trying to take it away from him before he's even beat Tyron Woodley. No, exactly. That's what I'm saying. They're running out of excuses. And look, I, I appreciate you having my back because it, it is funny, man. It's like, bro, I, I'm over here eating like ice cream. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, these guys are accusing me of fucking <laughs> doing pee, yeah. like pee Sugar. I'm like, bro, I, I literally have a... Bro, I'm literally eating ice cream. So how the fuck can I be on PEDs? You know? How the fuck can I be on PEDs? I literally just ate an ice cream cone, bro. Uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, the drumstick. A vanilla fudge drumstick. You guys. I just had a vanilla fudge drumstick. Like, why would I be injecting testosterone into my ass when I just ate a drumstick? Like, does that make any logical sense? Why would you conclude such a thing? Yeah. Waiting for me after my run tonight. Like, yeah. All these these boxers are like. True, Jory's just like, yeah, yeah. In his head, he's like, how the fuck is this relevant at all, Jake? Like, don't eat junk food. I'm like, bro. These fighters are like, Ugh! Ugh! and I'm just like, I eat fudgicles, bro. Therefore, I'm not on PEDs. I'm packing on some fat because I'm gonna drive that fat through Tyron's skull. <laughs> Like, this bro, that's what gives me my power is the Ohio milk. Yeah. Like, I grew up eating shit food and pizza. Yeah. Like, I grew up eating pizza and shitty. So, like, obviously, I'm not doing anything. Like, why would I? I eat fucking pizza. Duh. <laughs> it's funny, man. But it's this funny. is the thing. You've, you've always been an athlete. You've always been athletic. And next time a UFC fighter gets drug tested, they should just, like, show up. Tell you sad, be like, you guys, like, why are you showing up randomly at my house? I just ate a fucking fudgicle and a piece of pizza. Like, are you that dumb? I just ate pizza, bro. And, and like, as someone who's watched MMA for years, where you can, you could spot a lot of the juice heads, the, you know, the, the Vito Belforts, you know, people like that. You could say the acne all over them, the definition in their body. Like, you've showed zero signs of any of this. So, yeah, I wanted to bring that up because I was... Again, the most primitive fucking perspective ever. Does he have an acne breakout? Does he have male pattern baldness? Does he have gynecomastia? Does he have this or that? Those are easy ways to pick off, you know, speculative 
you know, natty versus not <laughs> cases. Like, obviously, if you see a guy and he randomly developed a titty out of nowhere, highly fucking suspect. Definitely worth, you know, looking at that one for sure. But it's not always that obvious. There's a lot of guys who fly under the radar and don't look any different visibly or potentially even look worse in some cases because they're on the downslope of their career and their body composition composition is just worse or they didn't get in as good shape like again just because you're on peds it doesn't mean that all of a sudden you're more jacked and shredded by default if you're eating fucking pizza and fudgicles all day versus if you had a good diet before like you could end up looking worse even though you're on peds you know going into your fight i'm not saying that that's what's happening necessarily but it's just like to only look at the flagship markers that are the most obvious red flags. Like, oh, he has a fucking back covered in acne. Obviously, he's on gear. And then disregard anyone who doesn't look like they're sauced out of their fucking mind. Absolute silliness, dude. Because I was pissed when I, when I seen such a well-respected guy talking that much shit. In terms of the MMA world, anyway. So is he talking shit or is he just giving his opinion when people ask him? You know, I think he's just giving a fucking opinion. I don't think... I don't know, like maybe he is definitely biased towards the MMA world because he doesn't want to see a guy, you know, I don't know, besmirch the fucking sport, if that's even a word. I think besmirch might be a fucking slang word, who knows? I think I've heard it before. But, uh, you know, put a bad mark on the MMA community by losing to somebody, you know, as not credible and like good as Jake Paul. And let's, you know, chalk it up to the fact that Jake's on PEDs and Tyron's obviously clean. Like, sure, you know, you could definitely argue that that's definitely potentially influencing his statements, definitely a high possibility. But again, it doesn't mean he can't give his fucking opinion. Like the guy is a highly regarded expert in the fucking industry. And people want to know, like who better to ask than a guy who's like been through the, the ringer with like top guys, not necessarily in boxing. Well, maybe he has, like, I don't know. Like I know he's a top MMA coach and obviously he's very well connected. And you think if anyone was to know like shit about this and have a good insight on it, it'd be him. So fuck, why not fucking ask him? Hey. Um, as always, they're always talking about you and, uh, you, you know, you've, um, you brought up a few things. One of those being fight a pay. Now, um, I, I wanted to touch on this because I think you've been winning some people over with this and it's, it's okay. So it sounds like that is the end of the PED discussion. So let me know what you guys think. Do you think, uh, you know, Faraz is in the wrong for talking about this shit? Do you think he, it's totally justified? Do you think he's biased? in his uh, statements about, you know, Jake Paul definitely being on PEDs and a lot of them, you know, not just like a little bit, like he's on an array of them versus Tyron is totally natural. You know, I definitely think there is like, personally, I think there's some bias, you know, bleeding through there a bit where he's saying, you know, Jake's definitely doing shit, but Tyron's totally clean. Like why would, why would Tyron do anything? Fucking Jake is obviously the one taking hella shit. You know, it seems a little bit, you know, a bit of an unfair perspective, but I mean, he's totally justified to give his stance and give his opinion. And if anyone, you know, we're lucky we have access to a fucking expert on YouTube that's, you know, a former coach of GSP who's willing to, you know, talk about this kind of stuff openly and isn't, you know, just closed minded enough to be like, you know, fuck you. I'm not going to say say anything about this kind of a situation at all. Like this is, you know, a cool time we live in where we can get, you know, a random YouTube commenter can just like get for ass Zahabi to fucking say something and, you know, give his opinion on something. This would otherwise be, you know an opinion that perhaps only a top athlete would have access to. Pretty fucking cool, in my opinion. So, I don't know. That is my stance. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Who are you betting on on the fight? Or even if you're not betting, like, who are you, who do you think is going to win? I should have said. So, let me know in the comments down below. All the comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog. Moreplacemoreneights.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemoreneights. Facebook, Snapchat. Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below my HRT clinic. It's all telemedicine from the comfort of your own home. Get high quality medical oversight from doctors who actually understand how to interpret biomarkers um, and order the proper diagnostics for you based on your own individual needs and situation. Regardless if you're natural, regardless if you're on HRT, regardless if you're a bodybuilder who is looking for risk mitigation and high quality oversight to keep you as safe as physically possible, we do the full spectrum of High quality medical oversight and represents the same quality of information that I try to put out on my channel. Vet my doctors myself, and I highly recommend you reach out if you're looking for somebody who's non judgmental, who actually knows their shit, and has your best interests in mind, and will not just be putting you on a cookie cutter script to make as much markups on medications as possible. That is not the type of clinic we are. You know, there's a lot of clinics out there that are cookie cutter HRT mails. We'll just prescribe you, test, and after all, HCG, predetermined protocol, send you out the door. Let's get in the next one, make another markup on meds. 
We pride ourselves on the high quality services and medical oversight and education of our patients rather than the medications themselves. So regardless if you end up on farm or not, we make our bread and butter on the actual services and the actual interpretation of labs and the providing of high quality labs with high sensitivity assays and whatnot, finding your fractionated lipid panel and interpreting it correctly, getting things obscure that people don't even talk about like LP little a, that's the kind of shit we deal with and is our bread and butter and we take pride on. So if you want to get the best oversight, definitely check out my clinic as well as Gorilla Mind, nootropic formulas, Gorilla Mode pre-workout formulas and design myself from scratch, recommended diet model for those looking to gain maximum amounts of muscle as well as sports performance, being mindful of micronutrient intake, gut health, etc. This diet model is turnkey, idiot proof. It is the best newbie approach to figuring out what to do. Even if you're an intermediate and don't really know how to concurrently hit your micronutrient and electrolyte needs properly and balance everything whilst hitting your macros and absolutely ensuring, you know, maximum levels of sports performance improvements and uh, as much muscle growth as possible simultaneously. Like this diet does it all, it's turnkey. And um, I would highly recommend you check it out in the video description below, as well as anything else I'm associated with. It is all down there, it helps support me. Much appreciated when you guys use my links and coupon codes and whatnot. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.